hear me call them once a happy day. Sunshine for sale, for sale. Sunshine for sale, for sale. for a cup of tea, mister. If I had my teeth, they'd be chattering. Oh, you poor man. Give him five dollars. Don't despair. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, sir. Probably have to cut in Boss Cameron for half. Well, you wanted to go slumming. You think we'll be safe in there? No. Well, then let's go in. <laughs> Go on now, beat it, will ya? These educated college squirts, they can't hold their liquor. Sure glad I flunked in kindergarten. Casey from Globe. Well, it looks like the mister up there finally got sore and decided to put the finger on our fair city. You got the wrong guy. You wouldn't print that, would you, Casey? Not and hold my job. You know, maybe the shop just stunned him. He died of a fractured skull from the fall. Look, copper, camera don't put enough cement on these streets to dent whipped cream. But I wouldn't print that either. That bruise wasn't from a love tap. Where'd he come from? I saw him come from the inferno. I Ooh. thought he was just another drunk. The Inferno, huh? Who is he? Anybody important? I'd hate to disappoint you, madam, but I'd say he ain't very important. Just yokel stuff. Well, I'm not Philo Vance or Dashiell Hammett's Bill Powell. That S on his sweater means he's one of the visiting basketball team from Spring Valley. I always knew this town was pretty raw, but I never knew Lightning to use a 38. That man was shot right through the lung. Holy cats. This is news that even Cameron can't stop. Cameron ain't gonna be too pleased about this. You should oughta know he won't stand for rough stuff. He should oughta work with these, like I do, tomato. Oh, yes, I've been telling you the name is Tiamato. Tiamato. Tiamato, see? You're still a vegetable peddler to me, tomato. Why do you come down to my joint? Why don't you stay uptown and leave me alone? I just wanted to see how your half lives and dies. It's a funny thing. You've been getting away with murder for years, but it took lightning to pin it on you. You know, if I was you, I'd pack my bag and not see the boss. Or I'd see the boss and not pack my bag. I'll change the name of the place. That'll fix things up. Yeah. I'll change the name. I read where a guy named Shakespeare says a rose by any other name still stinks. Ain't the coroner's wagon come yet? They always come fast like in the moving pictures. Why didn't you get them out of the way before nobody got there? Too busy counting these. See, they're, they're pretty. Where'd you got them? Off the stiff. Only he wasn't a the stiff then. See, they're pretty and green and soft like grass. Love grass. Love everything pretty. You didn't leave anything on him? I mean, nothing that could identify him, did you? Oh, no. Oh, I put one of them cars like we give out to the, to the Hicks down at the station in his pocket. Good advertising, huh? See? <laughs> I run this town with ballots, not bullets. You know that, Amato. What you do with your dice and your wheel is your business. 
But using a gun makes it my business. Boss, it was an accident. The hick lost the craps. Don't they all? He raises a beef about the crooked dice. And Spider cracks him like an egg. Gee, it was pretty. But you wouldn't shut up. Kept squawking about calling the cops. I should have taken away your gun when I took away your vegetable stand. You won't use your brain. You won't play smart like Tom and me. Mr. Cameron, my brother. Yes? Well? Nothing. Get away from my train. I covered you on that Smith jam by making young Carney take the rap. But this time, I don't know. This is just what the district attorney has been waiting for. I'd let Pringle hang you with your own rope if it wasn't for the river wards. Even those votes may not help now. Every reform leader in town will be crying for my scalp. Every newspaper yell bloody murder. The Globe's headline should ought to be Porty. You mean Casey? At the bat. This mess coming just before election means suicide. Why, yes, that's what it'll be, suicide. Where is it? Where is it? I've got to have it now, I tell you. Here it is, Chief. The Globe ought to give me a raise for this head. Divine Wrath Strikes City, Casey. The moving finger writes on having writ spells Cameron, Omar Khayyam, and Casey. No, no, that's not it. Yes, I know. Here it is. My garden. When fertilized with vitamin X, the pansies turn their little faces laughingly to the sun. No wonder mine have been frowning. I use vitamin P. Oh, it don't make sense. Hitler wants to play London Bridge is falling down, Cameron's dumb henchman commits murder, and you worry about the facial expressions of pansies. What happens to this, Exhibit A? Pringle and the good citizens have been trying to get rid of Cameron for years. I had a call. Static. Cameron. Hello, boys. Just happened to be in the neighborhood and thought I'd drop in for a nightcap. We're dry as Kansas. Well, I'll have to send you boys over some of my private stock. Bourbon or rye? Don't drink. Ulcers. Well, I gotta be moving along. Claustrophobia? Yeah. Unhappy in tight places. Ah, well, it's nice to see you again, Bob. We haven't had a chat for a long time. Three months, four days, six hours. Seven hours. You forget daylight saving. Incidentally, you really helped me out with that sewerage story. The switching contracts came a little bit late, but I always like to see the right man get the job and keep it. How's the wife? Okay. And my son's all right, too. Oh, that's fine. He must be old enough to play basketball now. Next year. Too bad about that basketball player from Spring Valley committing suicide tonight. Suicide? Hadn't you heard? No. Well, it's a good thing I tipped you off. I always like to take care of the Globe. The publisher is a pal of mine. Yes, the boy came to town for the first time, lost all his money gambling, and was afraid to go back home. Too bad, but you know how those things happen. I don't, but our publisher does. I hear you've become quite a gardener. I wouldn't take it too seriously. Might interfere with your job. Good night, Bob. Remember me to your wife. Someday I'm going to print the truth. And then I'll have nothing to do but grow the biggest asters in Newburgh. Buster Dove, who are you going to call? Ripley. A murdered boy just committed suicide. Excuse me. Smell the new mown hay? I hate to trouble you, ma'am, but uh, 
This is the first time I've been in this city, and... I'd never guess. In fact, I was just going to ask you the way to the aquarium. Oh. I know a girl like you back home. But she doesn't get invited out much. Well, now that we're so friendly, just where is our home sweet home? Spring Valley. Let's see. There's Temple City. We're about 10 miles to the north. There's a... There it is. There? That's a fly speck. Well, it isn't a very big town, ma'am. As a matter of fact, we haven't got a railroad. You see, when our canning factory burned... No railroad. Well, that's all very interesting. But I'm here to give information, not to take it. Well, that's what I was trying to get around to, ma'am. Where can I find a tri-state insurance company? Oh, so you're one of those boars that knock the door down at 7 in the morning to collect a dime a week. Nope. I'm an attorney. Or just plain lawyer, ma'am. Would you please stop calling me ma'am? It's miss. Oh, I'm very sorry. Not much good at telling a woman's age by her face. Ma'am? Entertainment as you like it. As long as you like it. I've told you, our company pays on death from natural causes, accidents, and murder, but not on suicide. And I've told you, Mr. Uh, Wilson, that it's not suicide. I read what the papers had to say, but Johnny wouldn't kill himself. They just won the game. He'd won his letter. Look, don't you see? He'd saved his money to buy the Jones farm. He and Effie were going to get married right after graduation. No. Johnny wouldn't kill himself. He had too much to live for. And I suppose you're inferring he was murdered. That's just what I mean. Then you'd better go see the prosecuting attorney. I'm going to lunch, and he's on a diet. But I can't figure out who'd want to kill Johnny. Don't look at me. We just prosecute crimes. We don't commit them. Look here. As a prosecuting attorney, I appreciate your professional interest, but everything's been taken care of. Why don't you go on back home and forget it? Your clients will need you. Nothing I'll collect around my office but dust. This is my first case. Besides, there's more to it than just business. You see, Johnny and I were sort of like brothers. And his mother, well, she feels mighty bad thinking Johnny got in a mess and killed himself. So I figured to stay around till I can prove it was murder. I suggest if you feel there's something crooked about this case that you see Cameron. He took a personal interest in it. Cameron? That's all I've heard since I hit this city. Who is this Cameron? Know who wrote the Bible? Well, there's been conflicting reports. Mr. Hollister, Cameron's a little furnished walk-up. Thanks, Elmer. If you ever come to Spring Valley, look me up. There I'm a man of our town. Small town. your load. Miss Sabre isn't 60. She doesn't need supports. It seems Miss Saber doesn't need any. I caught it on the first bounce. Turn about spare plate, chum. Magazines a mailman just handed me. I, uh, we don't uh, want any magazines. And I don't care if you ever get through college.
Aunt Harriet said she'd rather face the Germans in election in this city. So I left her in France. Took the clipper. Now, after three years, my favorite father's finally stuck with me. Mind, darling? I know it isn't polite to barge in on you like this when... when you haven't been invited. But as one camera into another, if you wait around for invitations, you don't get anywhere. Looks as though I'd suddenly got a smart young lady on my hands. If you've been on your own as much as I have, you have to be. Sabra, I didn't... I wanted to come back before. And yet... Well, it's like... Like when you remember a place you used to love and... and where you had fun. You want to go back, and yet... Yet you're afraid to. Because things might have changed. My barber says I've changed. Had three less hairs this morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm not worried about my father. But somehow you're all Boss Cameron now. Maybe I should have stayed with Aunt Harriet. But you don't mind my being here, do you? Do you? Terribly. You like that first breath of spring the poets write about. And that sulfur and molasses tonic your mother talked about. And made me take. If you're trying to flatter me, I like it. <laughs> In case of emergency, break the glass. You've changed, Sabra. You've sort of uh, grown up. You've done all right, too. Regular Bo Brummel. Who's this Bo Brummel? I know Bo Schultz and Bo Ferrazzi, but I don't know no Bo Brummel. Pardon me, sir. Will you please send my mail to the Butler's Club? What's it? My, my resignation, sir. Where was the fight? At the door. And there's a Mr. Lynn Hollister in the library. He says not to hurry, just so that he gets back to Spring Valley in time to color his Easter eggs. Spring Valley. A jack leg. Slim says he's in town. But I didn't think he'd have nerve enough to show here. Say, what is all this? Who's George's pugilistic friend? Oh, a big fella? A little lawyer? Not just some roof trying to put the V on your father for a job. <laughs> uh, don't tell me you're still being bothered by every Tom, Hick and Harry. Everybody has to start by knocking on some door. But they don't have to break them down. Look, a kiss against a... A new Sable, I'll not only get him out of the house, but send him back to Spring Valley. I'll take that bet. Sorry, this is a family affair. As head of my family, I'll take care of Mr. Hollister. Now, darling, you may be a sensation in a conference, but you don't need brains under a soft light. <laughs> now, you just relax and watch a second generation Cameron go to work. Maury, huh? uh, try a cigar from that box. Hey, you know I don't smoke. I said, have a cigar. I get it. to make you detour. Well, I thought it was that antisocial butler, ma'am. Miss. Sabra Cameron. And I'll call you Lynn. Sure got introduced in a hurry. I must look awfully silly down there. Yes, you do. Well, I'll get up. You know, you and Father should get together. Well, that was my idea. I, uh... This is not only his hobby, but his pride and joy. Way back somewhere, he started out to be an engineer, but... Yeah? I... Well, I wanted to be one, too, but... somebody willed Mama set a law book, so... I took up law. You know, uh... You're just what I expected. You got me there. I didn't know what to expect. Oh, Jimmy told me all about you. Jimmy? Yes, he... He's always falling off those polar ponies of his. It is sweet of you to take me out for him tonight. Me? Well, there must be some mistake. 
I know a Jimmy back home, but he wouldn't be falling off any polo ponies because all he's got is an old car with a lot of corny wise cra cracks written all over it. No, I... I came to see your father. Well, personally, I'd like to be the other fellow. I'm not. My dear father isn't home. My blind date must be so blind, I guess he can't even see the house. Well, I, I guess that leaves me a damsel in distress. Well, look, I, I'd like to take you where you want to go. Oh, I wouldn't want you to do that. Seems a shame to let you sit here alone when you're so all dressed up. Oh, just a little something Caparelli threw together between air raids. For a lady under fire, she didn't do bad. My wrap, please, George. Yes, miss. Shall we go? Well, I, uh... Hope you don't mind my getup. Oh, no. I almost had a tux made on purpose once when Cousin Ellie counted on getting married. But old Cal's draft number didn't come up. He joined the army anyway. Piece of beefsteak could help that eye. Beefsteaks are never. I am a vegetarian. Looks like you got nothing to lose but a daughter now. Seedy bloke. Should ought to have his hair cut. A lady cut Samson's hair. Hmm? And if I know my daughter, history will repeat itself. Where are we supposed to go? How about the Union Station? Too big. All right. You name it. I'd like to go to a place called the Club Inferno. You are starting out the hard way. Well, it's the last word. Yeah. Good evening. Good evening. Howdy. When they pinch you in this town, they do it in a big way. Well, hadn't you better pull over the curb while they're still polite? That's my escort. My father has them follow me everywhere I go. Loads of fun. Hmm. Compared to you, a uh, goldfish is a hermit. Looks like the fellow that owns this place knows where he's heading. Wants to get in the mood. I sure didn't know where I was heading. <laughs> Good evening, Miss Cameron. So nice to have you with us some more. How's your father? Fine, thanks. Mr. Model, meet Mr. Hollister when he gets up. How do you do? Can I check this for you? No, thanks. I'll just keep it with me. Montgomery! Give Miss Cameron the best table in the house. Gee, she's pretty. Yeah. But there's something funny about that fellow. He can look you straight in the eye. Good evening. One of our dibs. She's coming out next week. Maybe coming out, but she ain't going any place. Hello. You must know everyone. Yes, but it isn't mutual. I mean, uh, there's so much petty envy and jealousy in politics. People resent my father because because he's so much smarter than anyone else. I uh, wouldn't know. It took two fires and a cyclone to get me out of school. <laughs> <laughs> Please, may I have your order? French 75. Ever drink one? Nope. But I shot one on our courthouse lawn. Gave me an awful kick. Same idea. <laughs> What's your pleasure? Throwing eggs in an electric fan. But that's out of season, so just give me a cup of coffee. Oops. Are you being taken care of, Miss Cameron? Yes. You should feel flattered. This is Mr. Hollister's first evening in town, and for some reason or other, he wanted to come here. I am flattered. Pleasure or business bring you to town? Well, I couldn't very well say it was just business. 
seeing there's a beautiful lady present. Well, I don't want to keep you two boys from getting together, so if you'll excuse me, I think I'll put in an order for a sable coat. Going to be with us long? Maybe yes, maybe no. Depends on how long it takes me to clear up the death of a friend of mine. Suicide. That's what the paper said. But me and the paper sort of disagree. Gambling over there? Yeah. Anybody ever win? Yes. Why you ask? Oh, Johnny always won. That's the fellow I was telling you about. Yes, sir. He was really lucky with the ivories. The only thing I could ever beat him at was pitching pennies. I'm going to mosey over and see what's going on. But this is our big number in the show. Plenty exciting. Plenty hot. <laughs> Plenty interesting. With all that noise, a gun could go off and nobody would ever hear it. Why did you let me do that? You know I never drink my own stuff. Them's honest dice. You said you wouldn't be caught dead with them. No, I'm afraid I'll be caught dead without them. The spider, I said, let that take win. Win? You heard me. Get going. <laughs> Someday that man will come back and take us both to the boo house. I hope you're as lucky at everything as you win there. I hope so, too. Bye. I'll be back again soon. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. I don't think Mr. Amato will care about seeing you again. <laughs> French 75. Coffee. Look, I'm not very... <laughs> I'm not very good at talking about me, but... I wish there wasn't any in Jimmy. I have a confession to make. There isn't any Jimmy. That's what I figured. Huh? I could tell by the way you were tapping your foot in the library. See, I used to watch a lot of trials back at the courthouse, and I could always tell when a witness wasn't telling the truth. Women keep tapping their feet, and men keep drumming their fingers. Funny, isn't it? Very. Mr. Hollister, I'm afraid you're a little too smart for my good. Well, I don't know why you did it, but it's a lot more entertaining than sitting around the YMCA. Look. If I want you to stir my coffee, I'll let you know. Green? Oh. Uh. Pardon my heck? Yeah. When they win, I take it back. <laughs> That's good business. Oh, uh, more of the phony stuff you can't spend. Mail order lawyer was down to my place last night with your daughter, snooping around and asking a lot of embarrassing questions. I don't like it, see? We don't like it either. You told him? Who, me? Why, Tomato. Tomato. You shouldn't ought to go around testing incriminating remarks against your pal. And new councilman? What does he mean? You sit on the ticket? Was. Maury had photostats of an interesting bank deposit by Hughes after turning over the racing tape. He's out. Slade? In. Oh, no. Oh, no. You don't pull a fast one like that. You promised if there was a shake-up, the next soft bird was mine, see? That still goes, see? Are you telling me what to do? In spades. Amaro, you've not only jeopardized the progressive party with this college kid jam, but you've just told me what to do. You're through. In spades. You can't brush me off like that. You can't get along without the river bars. And they are mine. See? Yes? Yeah! Cheer up, Tomato. The price of fruits and vegetables is rising with the river. 
You may think you are a funny guy, but I lay you 20 to 1, you will not be elected. Suppose you let me lose sleep over that. The doctors say I'm getting too much anyhow. You know something? That guy's too dumb to take this thing comfortable like laying down. Replace every straw boss in the river wards with men we can trust. We'll stuff those ballot boxes so full of votes we'll make a scarecrow look like a Santa Claus. Say, so what are you two doing? Just settling an election bet. Before election? Before Maury leaves. I wasn't going nowhere. Oh, yes, I was. I'm still a Beau Brummel. That stuff's preying on my mind. I even joined the Book of the Month Club, and I still don't read nothing about no Beau Brummel. Your Beau Brummel is my new councilman. So I guessed. Bad news not only travels fast, it nearly knocked me down at the elevator. My father looks well this morning. How is Boss Cameron? He's never around when you're here. Then may I talk to my father about him? You may accuse him of anything short of murder. Some of his friends I don't like. You look tired, darling. Oh, well, it's a restful tired. The kind your mother used to have after a good day's house cleaning. You're a lot like her, Sabra. You laugh, walk, talk. Things would have been a lot different if she'd lived, wouldn't they? Uh, I mean, we wouldn't have been separated so much. Well, I'll make up for it, because now I'm home to stay. Of course, sir. Uh, May have to go south for the winter. I wouldn't want to stay here and freeze in my tenement mink. What? No sable? No sable. <laughs> <laughs> they are paid off. You don't seem too disappointed. Well, Mr. Hollister is rather nice. If you like the Milky Way. But say he's still determined to see you, and I hope you have better luck with Mr. Hollister than I did. Baby? You just relax under your soft light and you sit back and watch a first generation cameraman go to work. Sure. Uh, but I know who you are. Yeah? Bugsy North from Shy. I saw your pitch in Crime Weekly. Oh, I'm afraid you've got your fingerprints mixed up. I'm Lynn Hollister. I'm from... I don't care where you're from, but she's going back to Kokomo. But that's... Oh, uh, here's something I borrowed from your brother. He's a nice neighborly sort of chap. Why, Sabra, I, I was just on my way to your home. Am I too late for dinner? Well, the soup's a bit cold, and Father's very upset. Oh. Pop's got nothing on us. This is Pop. Pardon my not shaking hands, but my hands are a little bit raw. <laughs> Looks like I just can't meet a Cameron standing up. Anything I can do for you? Can I bring you something? Liniment for three. No cream or sugar. 
This way, please. She told me to bring my asbestos hat. Certainly had a hard time getting together with you, Mr. Cameron. Of course, we did all right down there. I think I'll leave you two on your own. You better try my luck in the other room. I'm afraid you'll need more than luck. This ought to be quite a contest. The boss. Maybe he ain't mad no more. Yeah. Maybe he wants his back. Yeah. That, that young fella, he likes us too. Yeah. T, is something worrying you? Me worried? Me, T, I'm not worried? Yeah. I wasn't getting any place with the prosecutor, so when he said that you'd taken a personal interest in the case, well, I figured you were the one to see. I did take a personal interest in Johnny. I felt, even with the worries of a coming election, he was more important. Well, that's mighty fine of you, Mr. Cameron. Putting humanity ahead of politics. Thank you, Lynn. I want you to know that I did everything I could, but every report proved suicide. It's too bad. Well, the only thing left for me to do, the way you put it, is to forget it and go back to Spring Valley. I'm afraid so, Lynn. Rest assured, if anything new comes up, I'll advise you immediately. And after election, I might find a spot for you here. There should be one for a bright, determined young man like you. That is, of course, if you don't mind associating with a politician. Oh, I like politicians. They're clever. My old Squire Kane's the smartest man in our town. He's got a good heart, too. Puts $20 in that collection box every Sunday morning. And cheats the boys at poker every Saturday night. I don't play poker. Well, if I left tonight, I could make connections for Spring Valley. Yes, sir, if I hurried, I could just about make that train. I'm sure Saber will be glad to see that you get there. Who's going where? When? Lynn's going home tonight. Oh. I thought you might drive him to the station. Well, looks like we both won. You sure you won't go with us? No, darling, I'll walk. Need the exercise to keep the old ticker in shape. Where'd you go? I didn't know Inferno did such a good business, Amaro. I'll have to... First time you ever come to see me social-like, boss. Just to show you that there's no hard feelings. Thanks, boss. Good night. Well, my hands feel better now. Goodbye, Lynn. Good night, sir. Good night, darling. Maybe you got no hard feelings, but my bet still goes, see? Oh, Maro, how can you talk politics on a night like this? Look at that moon. Have you no poetry in your soul? I've just won a little side bet. Too much success might go to my head. Good night. Morning, baby. Good morning, darling. Company? Surprise. Harriet. <laughs> It'll be nice to see the old girl again. Uh, get us boiled eggs and a little crisp bacon. Wheat toast and uh, what is my resignation, sir? Good morning. Looks like I'm always holding you folks up, but I got such a kick out of those gadgets in your shower that I almost forgot breakfast. Steak, rare. I thought you had decided to leave us. Well, well I. Uh... <laughs> it's this way, sir. After twenty years of faithful service, I. Uh... Miss Sabra won't let me go. That goes for me, too. But it only took me 20 minutes. Lynn told me about Johnny last night. I know you'll still try and help him, no matter how busy you are. Because my favorite father is like that. 
Now we have a border. Well, I'm not going to stay here without repaying you. Back home, we figured that if you borrow a cup of sugar, you ought to return a cup and a half. That's fine. Well, I got to thinking about a lot of things last night. About that job you had for me. I and... said after election. Well, that seems like closing the barn door after the horse is gone. You won't need much help after election. I'm in a spot right now, so I figure let's start now. That's fine. It might work out in a lot of ways. Our sort of using the same napkin ring will tie us so close together that we're bound to run into something about Johnny. Splendid idea. And as you put it, we can sort of look after each other. <laughs> What's the matter? P.S. Lynn got the job. Then we go. The three of you go. We go. We go. The three of you. And that's why. And in closing, let me say. My hands feel like a flock of bananas. You're on in 20 seconds. 20 seconds? Your speech, pal. Oh, I've got my speech. Uh-huh. This is from Cameron's office. This is station CAM, the voice of the city. The following is a paid political broadcast. The opinions of the speaker do reflect the opinions of this station. Ladies and gentlemen, Lynn Hollister, the Progressive Party speaker. Mr. Hollister. In presenting Morris Slade as our candidate, I have the honor to present a man you'll never forget. A perfect specimen of manhood. The man every mother wants her son to be. Hardworking, loyal, honest. Honest? Honest, Morris Slade's private life should be a lesson to every voter. His interest in our great city is a glowing torch of unselfishness. His Bananas. Look, folks, there's been a little accident here in the studio. And I'd probably have trouble getting the right words for my candidate on the air without my papers. And you'll probably all vote for Mr. Slade anyway, so I'd better talk about a man I know a little more about, Mr. Thomas Cameron. And in thinking about him, it reminds me of a fish fry we had back in Spring Valley. Most of the fellas splashed around in the water and made a lot of noise. But a quiet fisherman came to the party with all the fish. Back home, we call them fish fries. And here, we call them elections. I remember that I fish fry. Counting up, Your Lynn got a bone in his throat. About the same. And my Johnny well, got Dr. Joe away from his wedding to help him. Time's getting short, and our candidate's face is getting long. So when you vote for the Progressive Party and Morris Slade for councilman next Tuesday, remember, you're voting for some councilman. You have just heard Mr. Lynn Hollister. Good speech, huh? Well, it was pretty good, but uh, I still prefer Gene Autry. <laughs> oh, good afternoon, Mr. Hollister. Oh. Nice work. But I couldn't quite tell whether you're for Slade or against him. Maybe that was the idea. You better hurry up and get in here before someone thinks you're a fugitive from a swing band. Your father will think I'm a fugitive from another dinner plate when I miss that banquet tonight. I uh, got your phone call and... Uh, Party was awfully dull. Besides, Father's kept you much too busy lately. And I've missed you. I've sort of missed you, too. You and the police force. <laughs> dizzy? Nice dizzy. Woo! Round and round she goes. Where she stops, nobody knows. Maybe I spoke out of turn. 
These things break down once in a while. Think it'll take long to fix it? I don't know. Don Dillon got stuck in one back home once. Went up a boy and came down an old man. <laughs> Save a couple of night owls flew by, we could have a game of bridge. Well, at least we're alone up here. Not quite. But we will be as soon as I give that star a Sunday punch for winking at you. So quiet and peaceful up here. Makes you feel so away from things. I like it. Then you'd like Spring Valley, because it's always quiet and peaceful there and friendly. Even the boats on the river in front of our house blink at each other, sort of neighborly, and they seem to shake hands as they pass. Shake the fists at each other in this city. Yes, I, I'd like Spring Valley. Gosh, this fellow's so slow fixing things it'd take him a month to wind an eight-day clock. It's a bit chilly, isn't it? Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, I was thinking of... Oh, thanks. Here. You know, you'd be lovely if you had brown hair. I have brown hair. Yeah. You know something? That's the first time I've ever really been kissed. You know something? Here comes the second. Hey, mister! If you want me to hold this thing any longer, you gotta give me more dough. your breakfast. I don't see much of my favorite father these days. I haven't heard any complaint about Lynn. George can't even put him out with a cat. Don't change the subject. Worried, darling? No. Sure? You're much too bright and too inquisitive for a young lady that's been coming in pretty late nights. I give up. How's about a kiss on election day? For luck? Thanks, baby. We will win, won't we? By hook or crook? The telephone for you, sir. Yes, I'll... I'll take it in my room. Yes. Father. Why did you look so funny when I said by hook or crook? Baby, you're imagining things. That comes from those late hours. I'll have to talk to Lynn about that and some other things, too. You know, I don't mind his using my razor, but I draw the line to singing spirituals in the bathtub. <laughs> now, you run along and do your shopping, and you leave this election to me. They're in the baggage car. They want to get used to riding in it before Cameron finds out we're here. Uh, uh, pardon me, but could you tell me where I could find Mr. Cameron's house? Who's got my bulletproof vest? Hey, Skimpy, you know how easy I catch cold. Your tip was right, boss. A motor's raking him out of towns like you skim flies off cream. Oh, thanks, Al. A motto and his big boys are heading for the 5th Precinct. Maybe I should ought to go meet my pal. This is my business. Get all the help you need and step on it to the 5th Precinct. You know, a motto don't believe in pillow fights. Now, how far can we go? 
I didn't hear a word after I said, step on it. You boys know what to do. I'm counting on you, see? Lloyd. Take Butch and Adolf to the soup kitchens. Some more of the boys will be over to help you out. <laughs> Pretty. <laughs> get going, get going. <laughs> I still don't get it. Why the rented car? Well, I figured that with you driving all the time, that I never get a chance to... Yeah. What to do with my car? Old man liked it, so I gave it to him. Should have waited till tomorrow. I'd ordered new tires. Darling, why all this sudden excitement about going to the poles? As long as I'm a little fish in this big puddle, I thought it might prove interesting to look at the other little face. All right, we'll go to the soup kitchens. I'd like you to see how well Father feeds those poor men. Henry, the soup kitchens. I didn't recognize you, Mr. Hollister. I heard a lot of your campaign speeches. That's good work. Uh, this is Miss Cameron. How do you do? I haven't had the pleasure of meeting you before. Now I can see why your father keeps you under glass. Excuse me. All right, boys, get going. Come on, there's lots of other polls to cover. We gotta work fast. Come on. Business looks good. Feed them right and they'll vote right. The boss says a man never listens on an empty stomach. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Excuse me, will you? I gotta get him moving along. Hey, you know how it is, don't you? <laughs> hey, why don't they show? These guys been voting already. Hey, what's the idea? Well, I just thought maybe you could give me change for this big bill. If you want change, ask for it. That's my racket, too. All right, all right, all right. Could you change this for me, Mr. Hollister? It's a 50. Oh, I'm sorry, Floyd. I didn't know they still printed them that big. No, ma'am, I ain't working. At present, I'm seeking relief from relief. Oh. How's the food? This caviar is delicious. You're pretty. James Brown. James Brown, over there. Henry Jones. Henry Jones, soupy to my pals. Over there. Monroe, Gilbert Monroe. Monroe, around here. Voting, eating, eating, and voting. Nah, getting in a rut. How many times you voted? Only three. The guy behind me's four ahead. I gotta get over to that fifth precinct. I hear they're giving away a set of dishes. <clears throat> nice meeting you again. Oh, I'm sorry, Sabre. It's okay. Look, how about going over to the fifth precinct? Do you mind? No. But if I'd known this was going to be a crook's tour, I'd have brought my roller skates. Boxy! Oh, Boxy! But I want to see my Bugsy! You know, I favor the Oriental custom of keeping the woman confined to the home. Look, why don't you go back to Kokomo? Looks like a run on Social Security. Pardon me a moment, Sabra. Order route. Henry James. Ed Miller. Jack Coble. Frank Berlin. Wheatfield. <laughs> John Mason. All surf. You get around pretty fast, Mr. Brown. Thought you'd wait for dessert at the soup kitchen. That was there in my life. You know me, Pat Mullen. Sure, I married your sister. How is this? Fine, fine. Next, Dave Jones. Did you get your dishes? Get in the old runaround, eh, buddy? You must be new around here to worry about a little wholesale voting. 
You must be a reporter. How come the savvy? Pencil marks around your ears. Old Luke Muir on our dispatch has them. Buddy, you're all right. Let's snag a ringside seat and twirl a couple of sparklers while the big folks shoot off the fireworks. Fireworks? Stranger, here's a scoop for old pencil mark Luke because I can't print it. You can't get away with kidnapping me. My father... Ain't kidnapping you. Ain't kidnapping you. Just want to look at you, that's all. And, and, and you look at the flowers. Who do you think I am, Ferdinand? Oh, well, the flowers is, is pretty. Like, like you, and pretty. I take it it isn't good to see things around here that Cameron doesn't want you to see. Well, there's a lot of guys vacationing on health resorts that ain't in bad health. Well, goodbye, stranger. It's every man for himself now. If you hear any noise around them cracker bells, it won't be mice, it'll be me. That's all. I ain't gonna hurt you. Just want you to be my girl. Lynn! 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 I ain't gonna hurt you, really. I, I like you. I... I never was so glad to see you in my life. You're going home. Why? He's certainly done his bit for the day. I said you're going home. No, I'm not. No? No. We had an ornery, stubborn mare once. Didn't have sense enough to leave a burning barn. But she went this way. <gasps> What's the idea of this caveman stuff, anyway? There's liable to be a shooting spree. We gotta get out of here. There's no reserved seats for my girl. What? I said you were my girl. Let me go. No. Oh. I see you got your dishes. What's that? I can't see. Some of Amato's tots are playing tag with your father's phony voters. He doesn't have to win that way. Well, then he's going to an awful lot of trouble for nothing. Henry? Henry! If you don't put me down, I'll call the police. You'll find them on the bottom of the pile. Don't unwrap until you get her home. That's what I thought, too! That guy knows too many words. He ought to have music to go with him. Mrs. Smith. Home sweet home. Mr. Cameron's butler said I'd find you. I thought you'd forgotten Johnny and me. I hadn't forgotten. Oh. Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith. Mrs. Smith, huh? Somebody call for an ambulance. Address? Spring Valley. Johnny's mother? Yeah. Uh-huh. No lightning, but on a clear day, you can still see cameras. Get all about it. Cameron party in four more years. Get all about it. 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 Get all Get all about it. Get all about it. Get Extra. Get all about it. 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 Get Oh, good morning, Governor. Yeah, thanks. 
How about coming over to dinner Friday? All right, we'll make it some other time. I've been trying to see you ever since I left the hospital. Sabre and I have been celebrating the little dinner given by our new councilman. I wouldn't have kept you waiting till now, but uh, as Ring Lardner says, it's hard to rise with a lark when you've been out on one the night before. George evidently didn't expect me in last night, or he thought my room needed a little airing after the election. George thought that now you'd probably be going home. Well, that's mighty nice of him. Seems like a lot of people have been doing my thinking for me lately. I've been doing a little on my own, too, about you and Amato and Johnny Smith. I don't know what you're talking about. No. No. Look here, man. I have several appointments. Sabre invited you to be our house guest. And you've repaid our hospitality. But now the party is over and the guest is leaving. Do I remove myself or will the coroner do it for me? I just want to be up on your etiquette. I know what you're driving at. But there's nothing you can do about it now. No. Johnny's mother's in the hospital, and whether she lives or dies, I'm going to find out who killed Johnny. If I have to take you and your whole machine apart. Father. I think you'd better go. I ought to be pretty well packed now. I'm glad I came back, though. A lot of things have cleared up. That business about polo ponies and no escort. You're asking me to the house. You two work pretty well together. My Father. daughter. Mr. Hollister is going. Yes. Guess I should have gone a long time ago. Funny thing, you. You think you know people, and then suddenly you meet somebody you believe in. I guess you believe in them because you want to. Oh, you wouldn't know what I'm talking about. Ben, you won again. And you won because you should. Because the people wanted you. Oh, darling, I'm so proud of you. Come on, how's about a smile? When did you come in? Just now. Imagine that stupid hick blaming you for Johnny. You couldn't know anything about it, could you? Could you? No, baby. Did you go shopping yesterday? And I've been so busy, I forgot to ask. Yes, but there were so many people everywhere. All I brought home was a, a red checkered tablecloth. Checkered? Why? <laughs> I believe you're on the level about splitting with Cameron. But what can I do? Cameron's got me sewed up tighter than Hitler has Mussolini. And we still have four more years of it. My father. They fought a different kind of war. Look, Mr. Pringle. Stay right here till I get back, will you? I'm not going anywhere. Fast. Look, I finally catch. I finally catch up with this guy, Bo Brummel, but I don't catch the foreign lingo. Arbiter eleganti arum. Uh -huh. Well dressed man. Well, can you beat that? <laughs> I've been wasting all this time looking for myself. <laughs> Hiya, sucker. Shh. I'll tell Sabre I saw you. She's sort of taken the chill off since uh, you got the breeze.
I remembered this from law school. I don't get it. This is nothing but an old Civil War statute passed to protect slaves. Yeah, but it says you can't take away the rights of a citizen secured by the Constitution. And among those rights, the right to a free and honest election. And that election was about as honest as a $3 bill. So what? I lock up the gangs. Next day, bail and no trial. And then the merry-go-round. Yeah, but if you look at the bottom of the page, you'll see we can hold our boys without bail. I figure if you pen a wolf up long enough, he's bound to howl. We've got him. The Wolves Glee Club. Well, what are we waiting for? You. I've been waiting for you. Yes, Mrs. Pringle, just a moment. Oh, tell Mrs. Pringle I won't be home for lunch or dinner. Or all night. Why, Mr. Pringle, at your age? <laughs> Can I help you, Mr. Brown, or is it Mr. Mullen? Ah, get moving. All aboard, Chicago Limited. Sorry, boys, but we changed your reservation to a drawing room down at the jail. Take them away, men. Come on, come on, get out. Come on, let's go. Come on. Fine married life, and the first time he's come home in a week. Afraid you're wasting your time, Lynn. My men combed everybody out of here so fast they didn't even leave footprints. Well, I just got a hunch. I think I'll still take a look around. Okay, I'll see you in the lineup. And if Cameron doesn't wiggle out of this one, I have you to thank, you and my father. Listen, if this works, we'll have Pop enlarged and framed in gold. <laughs> Smile. Give it to me. Men came. A lot of men. Gonna take me back to that place. I was smart. I hid. I ain't going back there. It's dark. It's got bars. They tied me up and they hurt me there. You ain't gonna take me back there either. Because I won't go. I won't go. Floyd! Floyd! You left some of your money. to that place. I won't go back there. Please, please, please don't take me back there. I won't if you'll tell me why you killed Johnny Smith. I, 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 don't, I don't know nothing about, nothing about it. Why did you shoot Johnny Smith? He made me do it. Made me do it. He gave, gave me money. Gave me lots of pretty green money. Who? I can't tell you. I can't, can't. He, he said if I ever told anybody, he, he'd have him come and take me away again. I, I, Boy, I can't tell you. I just can't tell you. That's all. Listen you to me. I promised I wouldn't let him take you away. Remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, yeah. Well, and who made you do it? All right. All right. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Listen, Don, 
I don't pay you $25,000 a year to come to your office. I'm sorry, Tom. I'm a little pressed for time. This vacation idea, rather sudden, isn't it? Well, no. My wife, Jessie, hasn't been feeling so well, and... Jessie's fine, and you know it. You're running out on me. Why? Because a couple of roughnecks start playing Pop Goes the Weasel, and a hick lawyer sees it. Who do you suppose would believe that confession outside of Pringle? Dead men don't make good witnesses. Funny thing, that statute is binding. And with Slade going the way he did, some of the boys don't feel so well. It won't be pretty if they start to sing. I didn't tell you before, Tom, but things have been happening so fast, and... Well, next election, I'm running for mayor. Well, what about it? As mayor of this city, I can't do a thing. I'm afraid the old days are gone, Tom. And as I intend to run for governor next term, I Here can't... are your plane reservations, sir. Oh, thanks, thanks. Going somewhere? Why, why, yes. Thought we'd take a little vacation. I know. Your wife isn't feeling too well. But, Governor, I put you in office. I could use you then. And now I'm through. Well, I may run for president next term. Excellent drink. Inspired by the gods, ruined by butlers. Drop in and have one with me sometime. That's the first social invitation we ever got together on. Aren't you going away somewhere? No, no. I'm disappointed. I thought all rats left together. Father. Oh, you're soaking. And me with a nice fire going up in smoke. I waited dinner for you. Yes, baby, I... I forgot. Apologies accepted. I thought you might be hungry, so I made an omelet for you, like Mother used to. Probably not as good, but... then I never spent as much time in the kitchen. It's not such a small world when you carry it on your shoulders, is it, darling? No, baby. Don't you care. Boss Cameron is dead. Long live my father. You know? I guess I've known a lot of things for a long time. Tried to kid myself. Being away from you so much, at school and traveling with Aunt Harriet. Your friends. I didn't like Boss Cameron. But whatever my father did, I know there was a reason for it. Two. Your mother left us too soon. I wanted to give you everything she missed. Then it was like a game. To out with the other fellow and feel inside that you had to win. And you won. Success. It's like straight whiskey and you want more and more until you realize the futility of it and want to stop. But you can't stop. It's gotten bigger than you. It's no good. Nothing can lick my father. Look, darling, there's a boat sailing for South America tonight. Let's take a trip and, and then go somewhere and start all over. And leave this city? Why, it's my... <laughs> That's impossible that a boy from nowhere with one push can topple an empire it's taken me years to build. Don't mention him, please. He's bossy and Reuben and, and stupid and... And you love him. Yes. Darn it. What's the matter, baby? He doesn't like me. <laughs> he doesn't like me either. I won't let anyone say the things he did about you, and I couldn't. 
I, I, we'd even talked about Spring Valley. Imagine me being dopey enough to marry a jack leg lawyer and live in a dull little town where, where riverboats shake hands. Not Sabra. Darling, we're off to Rio tonight. A glorious trip, new faces, excitement, and a nice long vacation, and then... It's time enough to worry about then, then. Yes, baby. What's the matter? Where are you going? We haven't much time. George can pack for Darling, you. Darling, haven't I always taken care of everything? Uh-huh. All right, then. Don't worry. And don't wait up. He's a fine boy, Sarah. Remember that. This is sensational. This little gadget not only digs, but deworms, fertilizers, and plants seeds all at the same time. Wonderful invention. I hate to take up your time, but one of Cameron's henchmen, Scarf, he's just saying it about that sewerage mess. Only 30 died of typhoid fever, remember? But Cameron will probably worm out of it. He always has. Worm. Well, I don't care if he does. I'll print this. Yes, sir, sweet spirits of rosemary. I'll print this. Oh, boy! I'm just dying to try out this little gadget. Well, that's 30. Tell the new managing editor, if anyone asks for me, I'll be in my garden. Yeah? Yeah? Holy cat! Oh, boy! Tell our publisher to hurry that new managing editor and bring me a new ribbon for my typewriter, six hams on rye, and a jug of coffee. And an osteopath! Holy cats! Would you mind letting me in on this? Cameron just gave himself up to Pringle. Hello. Call my wife and tell her I said not to fire the gardener. Pardon, Miss Sabra, but that Mr. Hollister's here again. I told you not to let him in. I didn't let him in. You'll find him on the front steps. Oh. Oh, he didn't. I, uh, ran against a door. But I put the door there. Why didn't you answer my phone calls? Can't hear. And why didn't you answer my notes? Can't read. And my flowers. I know, you can't smell. Well, this makes the picture perfect. Now you can't see. <laughs> You're still as stubborn and ornery as our old mare. We finally had to shoot her. If you think I'm going anywhere with you, you're crazy. That's not the scenery movie. It's us. What's so funny? You. And thinking about how a politician can't change his spots. Your father tells me he's going to learn how to play poker now. So he can out-battle old Squire Kane. Boy, that'll be about Spring Valley I'll never forget. Spring Valley? I'm getting out at the next filling station. What are you grinning about? Well, it takes 50 muscles to frown and only 14 to grin. I guess I'm just plain lazy. We're exhausted. We? Dust on them for a week. We thought you would never come. Howdy. Howdy. Good afternoon. 